What's going on YouTube today, today, today? I got me another reaction video, you know what I'm saying? Today we reacted to another Trap Geek video, you know what I'm saying? But this is a very, very special one because my dog, by my dog, Kane Vaughn, you know what I'm saying? R.I.P. The, the young legend, Kane Vaughn, you know what I'm saying? But the video called Kane Vaughn Friends Become Enemies, I'm pretty sure I know what it's about, you feel me? About Kane Vaughn and Quano Rondo, all that, all that, all that bullshit, you feel me? But it was released yesterday. He got 367,000 views on it. So, you know, I'm in to get a little bit more information and clarity on the situation, you feel me? Same thing y'all here for. So, I'm gonna go ahead and react to this bitch, you know what I'm saying? You know what people told me? People told me you and your boy was beefing or something like that. I know they said something about you. What happened? They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same issues and, and, and holes. And, and then, you know how the internet will try to make it. But it ain't nothing too scary, nothing. Should worry about. Five people were shot overnight in downtown Atlanta. Two of them died, and now investigators are working to figure out what led up to the violence. Just keep breathing, cuz. Come on, get that shit on that thing. You got it, my fault, my fault. Yeah. Man, I'm getting shot. What you mean, we're all side? All right, what's up, everybody? We gotta talk about this King Von situation. Rest in peace. It's tragic. Everything that could have went wrong went yeah. wrong that night. Von was shot in the parking lot of the Monaco Hookah Lounge, right in the center of downtown Atlanta. After this huge brawl with Quando Rondo's crew and a couple of undercover police, everything was captured on surveillance cameras with multiple angles. And I've seen so many rumors and fake stories circulating. The stuff about Dirk buying all the tickets to Quando Rondo's next show. News sites posting snap. Chats from did he really do that shit? I don't know. He just said it was a rumor, but at the same time, I don't know. Like, if I'm be from, like, I'm sorry, if I was Quando Rondo and Lil Derek bought all the tickets to my show, I would not be performing. I don't give a damn. You got me fucked up. Think I'm about to walk out on stage, this whole OTF in the fucking audience, nigga. Hell nah, bitch. You get your shit bust. What, nigga? My fake Quando Rondo account calling King Von Queen Von. That's all fake. We don't have to invent stories. Reality is oh, already crazy. Shit. People don't even know. There was almost a second shootout the night Vaughn was killed. After the chaos in the parking lot at the hookah spot, both crews rushed to the hospital and went to the same one. That's why Quando Rondo went immediately to Instagram Live when he got to the entrance at the Grady Memorial Hospital. Just keep breathing, cuz. Come on. Come on. And while they moved Vaughn's body on the highway eight miles from the hospital to the morgue, Atlanta police were in the very same hospital charging Quando Rondo's boy, Little Tim, for the murder of King Vaughn. Now, not only is Little Tim fighting this felony murder case, but something people don't know is he's already fighting a conspiracy case in Georgia. After this year-long investigation took... Stay out the streets, bro. Damn. Like, bro, I'm telling for all the niggas watching this shit, if you ain't in the streets, don't even think about going in the streets, my nigga. It's too much bullshit. One, it ain't worth it. It's a life outside the streets. I hope y'all know that shit. Like, you feel me? I feel like my job is to come on here, tell y'all niggas, stay in y'all motherfucking lane. You feel me? Because streets ain't for everybody, real shit. But you see, you see, if you in it, you know what I'm saying? You got all these bullshit to worry about. Ops, cops, niggas, shootouts, all that bullshit. Charges, all that shit. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Live your damn life. Now, you ain't got to live like this. Nigga be all locked up and shit. Live your life, bro. Down a trap house in Savannah, confiscating 15 pounds of kush, $16,000 cash, and a bunch of guns. And if you're online even a little bit, you've seen the rumors circulating that NBA Youngboy is responsible for Vaughn's death. We saw close NBA Youngboy affiliates going immediately to IG Live as soon as it happened, laughing at Vaughn being killed. The jokes on you, you this now you're getting wrapped down. Say, so that's that Vaughn pack. When I see him, he got popped. All I could do was lay. All I could do was lay. Now, we're gonna get into all this, but before we do, check out my song of the day. This is my. Nigga, if you ain't smoking, you can't, like, bro, if you ain't killed a nigga, you can't claim him, bro. bro. Don't claim the fucking body if you ain't kill him. You can't be like, oh, I'm smoking all this. If you ain't kill him. If your crew ain't kill him, nah, bro. Because NBA Youngboy's dog ain't really necessarily Quando Rondo's dog, if you want to think about it. So all the niggas that's from NBA side talking about, oh, I'm smoking Vaughn Pat. Shut the fuck up, bitch. 
Fuck all that shit. I got young po, let's go. I got a have it all, have it all. Niggas to raise the ball. I'm on my bottom now. One call, better get all of y'all. I'm kicking bad shit like Luke Kang. I bet they love the way we stepping. City kid getting money. Now them bitches wanna sweat me. I drop a bag up on me. Get that little boy from around me. Niggas be mad that we up. Knowing back then they down. I'm blowing them racks and showers. She wanna suck it for hours. I got the juice, the power. Alright, it's messed up to say, but this is the most attention Quando Rondo's ever gotten in his career. He was never a headliner, <laughs> but a huge artist, and now he's in the pit. <laughs> but that's funny as fuck, bro. Yeah, that's funny as hell. It had to take Vaughn to die for this nigga to get all this attention on no bad. I ain't even care with you, bro. Before that, I was not paying attention to Quando Rondo at all. I I prom I can't even name one song. I guarantee, you, like, I'm so for real. I can't name one song off the top of my head. Position where he's playing up the role of the bad guy. Dropping that song, addressing the King Von situation. Shooting that video, dressed up as the guy who killed him, Little Tim. He's been wearing bulletproof vests everywhere, getting all these shows canceled. And what makes the situation worse, at one point, King Von and Quando were cool with each other. 63rd, nigga, some dirty ass be your own nigga, dog. That's a video from a year ago of the two of them before a show in Atlanta cracking jokes and making fun of Von's ops together. But realistically, this relationship was not gonna last. And yes, NBA Young Boy is involved. Young Boy, the YB situation was just too real, just too good. All oh, us got a real bond, so I don't even, I don't f that music shit. Like, you feel me? This shit is way deeper than that. The reason Young Boy is mentioned in this is because he has ties with both Quando and Vaughn. Quando was the first artist signed to Young Boy's Never Broke Again label. They've been real close ever since, making music, doing shows. They even tag team jumped their own security together. <laughs> And when Youngboy was beefing with Kodak Black a couple years back, Quando showed his loyalty by going on IG Live and burning Kodak's merch. Man, it's up. No disrespect. Like, I forgot all about that shit. Because one, Quando is irrelevant. And me, I'm a Florida boy. So you already know I signed with Kodak, nigga. Quando, don't disrespect. Don't get your ass whacked by some Zoles out here trying to show out on live. Them Zoles are cut your shit up. You know, nigga, real shit. I'm not Haitian, but I know about them Zoles, boy. Them niggas will cut your shit the fuck up, boy. Don't don't play. I'm telling you, don't play. Them Haitians ruthless, boy. Man, we on some NBA shit, man. Tell me shit no more, man. He even went to New York and got into a brawl in Brooklyn with Kodak's artist Tutu G's. According to Tutu, Quando got slapped. People were throwing chairs. It was chaos. Now, thankfully, nobody your bitch got ass hurt, left. but the oh, beef God. is still on to this day. And young boys got a huge list of shit. these industry beefs with people he doesn't get along with. One tension that was slowly building behind the scenes was with him and a new artist out of Chicago named King Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Fuck young boy talking about on this song, bro. You talking crazy on this thing. Oh, yeah? He ain't even like that. Oh! I'm just dead, man. You got cap in your rap. At this point, Vaughn was just starting to get hot. He had Crazy Story 1 out, the buzz was slowly building. And in March of 2019, Vaughn went on Instagram Live to say that Youngboy was lying in his raps. Youngboy fans were quick in the comments, spamming him to apologize or something was gonna happen to Vaughn in 48 hours. Fast forward a couple months to December of 2019. Lil Reese, who's super close to Vaughn, comes out and says he would never do a song with Youngboy. After fans were asking him for a collab, we could see these lines being drawn real quick between Oblock and Young Boy's crew 4KT. YouTube Music Premium is I got a fucking ad in the middle of the video. Are you serious? What kind of bullshit? Fast forward again, four months ago. These photos surface of Vaughn holding hands with young boy's ex-girl and baby mama, Jania. At the she same time, Vaughn was tweeting subliminals about posting some other dude's girl, doing stuff that would have him stop claiming his kids. It didn't take long for young boy to match that energy and go out and do a song with King Vaughn's ex-girl, Asian Doll. Both of them using each other's girls as props to get at one another. And the whole time, 
People like 600 Breezy from Chicago were hyping Vaughn up, saying stuff like, I love what you're doing. We know what you're doing. Hashtag rapper K. So he's saying rapper killer. Basically, he's cryptically talking about Youngboy, who then responded indirectly, but super directly at the same time by saying, I'm going to make sure my son F's your daughter since you're trolling. Now this tension kept building and building behind the scenes. Vaughn's even got subliminals about Youngboy on this new album he dropped last month, Welcome to Oblock, on the song Mine 2. Vaughn says outright that he's got beef in Louisiana and the other dude doesn't know it. He's rapping that gangster shit, now he's got a show. So when the news hit last month that Vaughn got killed in a confrontation with Youngboy's artist, theories started to circulate that it was Youngboy who ordered the hit. Two days after Vaughn was killed, a fan uploaded an old unreleased song from Youngboy and titled it like it was a King Vaughn diss called Let Them Shots Off. Now this was pure clickbait, but the video still managed to go to number 8 on tr- This nigga is the police. How the fuck you know all this shit? You behind the- I'm sorry, you behind the fucking computer? Researching all this? You the police, my nigga. What? Like, bro? Police. Trending on YouTube, and it's not about King Von at all. And I saw fans starting to go back in the young boy's catalog, reading into his lyrics, looking for clues. One song in particular, they claim predicted Von's death two months before it happened. The song is called Dead Trolls, and at one point in the song, young boy talks about planning to rob somebody in Atlanta. He talks about leaving his ops dead, and mentions D. Rose being away from the Chicago Bulls home. You connect the lyrics, King Vaughn was staying in Atlanta, he got killed in Atlanta, D. Rose was a point guard for the Chicago Bulls, but in Chicago Drill, D. Rose look was at, an infamous O'Block shooter. Look at him decoding every goddamn lyric, every, you the police, goddamn it, you the police. Can't tell me no different, you the police, bro, you the YouTube police. Simple, you the YouTube feds, my nigga. Who got 40 years for a murder. He's been shouted out on numerous tracks by Chief Keef and even Vaughn, who's got photos side by side with him. And this song, Dead Trolls, just happened to drop shortly after these photos surfaced of King Vaughn holding hands with Jania, Youngboy's ex-girl. Now, before we get carried away, no, I don't think this song predicted Vaughn's death two months before it happened. I don't think Youngboy cooked up some Louisiana voodoo to make that happen. In reality, <laughs> the Atlanta line could be about anybody. Half the industry's in Atlanta, and Youngboy beefs with half the industry. J.D. Youngin, Fredo Bang, their beefs are well documented. Both of them got tension with Youngboy, and both of them record in Atlanta. So, no, I don't buy it. Truth is, Vaughn's manager says this incident was personal between Quando and Vaughn. This has nothing to do with um, young boy do the song with Asian doll and that has nothing to do with this, right? No. This has to do with <clears throat> Vaughn being the person he is and then he don't like all that sneak this social media stuff. And as those tensions escalated between both camps, word is Quando had been talking shit behind the scenes about Vaughn for quite some time, to the point where Vaughn said if he caught someone from that camp, he was putting hands on. And this music industry's small, you're gonna run. The real shit, I seen the video where he walked up on Quando, stole him and his shit. I seen that video. Yeah. Niggas wanna say, oh, tell all the thugs, put the gun down. Vaughn put the gun down, bro. He, he done stole a nigga, guess what? Still got shot. That's crazy, bro. And into people, especially in Atlanta. That's where all the good studios are, producers, label offices. Quando Rondo's from Georgia. Dirk and Vaughn are both based out there too. So this was only a matter of time. Now, the Monaco Hookah Lounge is right in the center of downtown Atlanta. King Vaughn's been to that spot before. It's a popular place, but it's also a red zone for shootouts. Three people have been killed at this place in the last year alone. That's why there were undercovers patrolling the area that night and at the venue. Now, the first reports that came out were confusing. The news said that undercover police had shot Vaughn. We even saw dispatch calls from Chicago PD telling their officers that Atlanta police had shot Vaughn and to move with caution around O'Block because emotions would be high. Last night in Atlanta, police shot King Vaughn and two of his people. Social media is active with, uh, they're upset with the police. So if we have any jobs in Berkeley, send two cars. Keep your eyes open, be wary. They're not happy with the police over there. We later found out three separate crews were involved. Vaughn's crew, Quando's crew, 
and the undercover police. Now, nobody knows what set Vaughn off, but Vaughn's manager says that night he wasn't himself. Vaughn was celebrating his album release at Opium Nightclub a few hours earlier. He was supposed to go back to his Airbnb around 2.30 in the morning, but he suddenly decided to switch routes midway and go to this hookah spot on Trinity Avenue about 10 minutes away. Now, Vaughn cannot carry weapons himself, He's been fighting that case with Dirk and Atlanta for close to a year. They got strict guidelines to follow, but he knows his status. Usually Vaughn travels with three to four security, a bulletproof truck, and his guys from Chicago. But on this night, he left Club Opium by himself with one driver and one other car, leaving that fleet of security behind. When Vaughn got to the hookah spot, he waited for 30 minutes in the car, and his security finally got word of his new location change and immediately rushed over to get to him. The whole time, Quando Rondo just happened to be in the same parking lot at that same hookah spot, napping in his McLaren. I know coincidences can happen, but this one's pretty big. What are the chances that King Von randomly decided to change routes and go to a hookah spot where somebody that he doesn't like happens to be at. One of Vaughn's friends spots Quando and goes back to tell Vaughn, and on the CCTV camera, we see Quando making his way over to this white SUV, scanning the area cautiously. Shortly after, you see Vaughn leaping out of his own car, going looking for Quando. As soon as Vaughn sees Quando, he starts throwing punches. Vaughn is unarmed, but his crew is swarming Quando quickly. That's when Quando's bro, Lil Tim, hops out the white SUV, pulls a pistol out and fires off five shots, hitting Vaughn in the chest and thighs. Bullets also graze Vaughn's manager, who is in the mix of it. All hell breaks loose. Vaughn's bro Slutty, who was right next to Vaughn when the brawl started, was the first person to return fire once Vaughn gets shot. Hitting Lil Tim in the leg once, but then his gun jams, so he can't finish the job. Now this actually saves Lil Tim's life. Him getting shot in the leg drops him to the ground, making him a non-threat to the undercover police who were creeping around back in the adjacent parking lot. With Lil Tim on the ground and Slutty standing over him with a jammed up Glock, Slutty turns and runs into the adjacent parking lot towards the undercovers, who start ringing off shots and hit both Slutty and another O-Block guy named Louie in the head killing Slutty on the spot and leaving Louis in critical condition. This whole time, Quando is still tangled up with King Vaughn, who's just been shot a bunch of times and has paralysis in the bottom half of his body. According to Vaughn's manager, Quando is screaming, Vaughn shot, Vaughn shot. And on camera, it looks like he leans in and holds close to Vaughn, either trying to help him or take his chain. It's hard to say which. But eventually, Vaughn's brother, Muop, runs over and- If you see a nigga, I'm sorry, if you see a nigga, um, down his shot. Why, why would Quando take his chain? I'm like, bro, both of y'all got money. What's the whole point of taking a nigga chain? I'm pretty sure he was trying. Well, I don't know. I don't. I can't say he was trying to help the nigga, but because after this whole shit happened, Quando got on fucking live, started taunting niggas and shit. So I can't really say what the fuck he was doing. If you trying to take the man chain, bro, that's some. Hmm, never mind knocks Quando in the head, separating him from Vaughn, where they can now pick him up and escape in the getaway vehicle. Unfortunately, even though the hospital was just 10 minutes away, doctors could not save his life. And now, we're left in the aftermath. You're talking about two cliques with huge influence, money, and power. The very next day, we saw 600 Breezy hitting the freeway at 150 miles an hour, leaving Chicago to go to Baton Rouge as a declaration of war. Bruh. With that nigga, bro, when I seen Breezy, what? Right after Von died, when I seen Breezy on his story, nigga, flying. I was like, what the fuck? That nigga stepping, stepping for Von. Nigga, what? I was like, yo, I'm about to get real Breezy in Baton Rouge, nigga, shit. But I ain't seen nothing happen after that. Mm -hmm. NBA Young Boys Crew 4KT. We smoke if you really have. We condone the violence. All you hear is sirens. Breezy is also openly talking about revenge on socials, leaving kissy emojis underneath Vaughn's killer's IG page. Several days after everything happened, Vaughn's childhood bro, Mimo 600, went to Savannah, Georgia to film a music video in Quando Rondo's neighborhood. 
I think he filmed it in the housing complex close by. Regardless, point is, nobody's squashing nothing. And while Mimo was out there in Kwando's neighborhood, this girl DMs him saying they should link up while he's there. After doing some research on the girl, Mimo finds her in a Kwando Rondo music video just last year. It was a setup, a backdoor attempt in Kwando's home city. And you've heard that theory. She even said it. You seen the DM? She said, LMAO, yes, sir. She tried to set that nigga up. Whoa. You gotta think, you gotta think before you come out here, bro, with these bitches, bro, because bitches be. Mm, it's the bitch that I get y'all niggas fucked on oh, God. Three, the enemy of your enemy is your friend. That's playing out in real time. But it's not just the industry that's affected by Vaughn's death. We can look at the city of Chicago too. This has been the most violent year in Chicago since 2016. And just like when FPG Duck died, one side was laughing, but now it's the other side's turn. As these memes of Vaughn packs are being shared all over the internet, this song's being made, and people close to Duck just showing Vaughn no signs of sympathy. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it for this video. Rest in peace to Vaughn. Let me know what you guys- I wouldn't know what I said. I wouldn't expect fucking people on Duck's side to show Vaughn sympathy because when Duck died, Vaughn was on social media laughing and shit, but I fuck with both their music, bro. I wish both of them were still here, you feel me? Because both of them- hard real shit but hey that's it for the video you know what i'm saying if you got any more shit for me to react to you know what i'm saying go ahead drop that bitch in the comments remember to react to your song you know what i'm saying hit my dm for a paid promotion of the song feel me let's hold the time i'm out nigga i grew up smart as fuck bad as shit but really like the least baddest kid that i was with the phone them been wild as shit been violent as shit Ben came home from them interrogation silent shit Now we fly with felonies and no IDs, private shit I make money just appear and disappear Magic